we come to say thank you for this day. Thank you for the men's department. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you for the men's department. Thank you for all of us being here. And God, we thank you for our pastor who's going to preach the anointed word of God. We ask you to bless everyone here. Give us the power and give us the joy. In Jesus' name. Come on, clap your hands for Jesus. Come on, can we open up our mouth and just exalt him for a second? Come on, can we give him the glory that is due to his name? He's worthy of all the glory and worthy of the praise. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, our God has been great. He's greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Yes. 
see how great
Jesus, clap your hands, open up your mouth, and render him the praises that he's worthy of. Hey, come again, said he's worthy of it. Now let's give it to him. Worthy of praise, 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 we're higher, worthy of praise. Oh glory, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Heard somebody say that had not been for the Lord who was on our side, that the enemy of our soul would have swallowed us up a long time ago. But thanks be unto God who causes us to triumph and gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at somebody just tell them, say, I still got the victory. I know I may have cried about it last week. I know I may have been confused about it last night. But make no mistake about it. I woke up this morning with victory. I said, I woke up this morning with victory. I said, I woke up this morning with victory. I tell you to take your right hand and bend it down your row and just say victory, victory, victory. Hallelujah. Just tell somebody, tell somebody on your left and on your right, tell them, say, I have no sad stories. See, the truth is, I could tell you one right now, but I'm no longer where they left me. a sad story, but the fact of the matter is I'm no longer where they left me. They left me there to die, but somehow, someway, there was a resolve within my spirit to get up from the dead place and live again. Tell somebody, say, get up from the dead place. Come on, tell somebody, get up from the dead place. Tell somebody one more time, get up from the dead place and choose to live. He said, I come that you might have life, huh? And have it more. Tell somebody, cancel my funeral. I've decided to live. This is no place for me to die. There's still victories I haven't seen. There's still manifestations that I'm waiting for. There's still favor over my life. Cancel the funeral because I decided to live through this. All right. I'm living through it, Pastor Stacy. I'm living through it. I'm living through it. Ask me how I made it. Because there's grace on my life. Huh? There's grace on my life that the devil don't like. And tell somebody, say, I'm grace for this. Can you clap your hands and give God. Clap your hands like you got victory.
and just tell somebody I am greased for this. If you didn't know by now. But the truth of the matter is that last situation should have taken us out. But I dare you to take your right hand and just say there's a grace over my life. I should have died in it a long time ago. But there's a grace. Yes, somebody, there's a grace over my life. To reveal the glory of God. Thank you, praise team. I'm going to have you be seated because as long as you're standing here, we'll keep singing. Can we thank God for the praise team this afternoon? We thank God for them. Amen. And doing a wonderful job. But we thank God for those of you that are here in this house this afternoon. Amen. Clap for yourselves. You made it back to the house of the Lord. We thank God you know, for all of our guests, all of our visitors. We want to say a very special happy Father's Day to all of our fathers. Come on, we thank God for the fathers. That's it, thank you. We thank God for the fathers, amen, that are doing the jobs, amen. Amen, it's not an easy job, it's not an easy task, amen. I'm a father of all girls, amen. That's the reason why I don't have any hair, amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Raising children are a job. Amen. And you shouldn't apply for the job if you're not ready to fulfill it. Huh? I mean, you got many, many out there applying for jobs and they ain't, don't have the qualifications. And the one thing about fatherhood is it will try you on the job. Amen. To make sure you are qualified. So we want to give a great big God bless you to all of our fathers that are here and those that are watching us online. We thank God for you. Amen. It is Men's Month. Amen. It is Men's Month, and we know some aren't here this afternoon, but we had a wonderful time this Wednesday. Uh, we're going to have our brother Joe, amen, who is our men's president. Can we clap for him? He's going to come to give us our formal welcome and to give us, a, to give us our formal welcome and to, amen, give us our announcements for, amen, this week. Amen. Clap your hands one more time as he comes forward. I didn't do this. Praise the Lord, everybody. We get ready to do our announcements and our welcome for today. We'd like to take this time to welcome you once again to Empowerment uh, Christian Church, where we empower the people of God with the Word of God. We are thrilled to have you join us in our place of favor for worship. It is our prayer that you leave restored, inspired, and empowered. If you are a first-time visitor and would like to receive more information about ECC, please see a member of our hospitality team to fill out our guest relations card, and we will make sure that you are updated. At this time, if you have not done so already, please take the time to do your own social media check-in. Let your friends know that you are here and that they, are, they still have time to get here. Our address is 19 Martin Street, here in the city of Amden, Connecticut. And uh, for our announcements, Sunday afternoon worship, just a reminder everyone that it begins at uh, 12 p.m. Prayer begins at 11.30. What time did I say, everybody? 11.30. That applies to me too, Pastor. Wednesday night prayer revival at 7 p.m. This month's NPR are for men only. We love you, ladies, but this month's NPR is for, what did I say? Men for men only. It's June, and we are excited because it's men's month. All the men, uh, especially those of you guys um, who participated last Wednesday, I believe. We had an outing. We had such a good time. We played some pool. I got my tail whipped. Uh, this month, we are um, here to support our men's department as we endeavor to encourage, to comfort, and to build one another, according to 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 11. Every week, something is happening to better equip ECC's men both in ministry and in the marketplace. This past Wednesday, our men's department had a great fellowship 
next door, which I just mentioned, at Towns Billiard. I, and we had a good time, y'all. So if, if, if you missed it, please make sure that next time, because we're going to keep planning something to do. We try to do something on a monthly basis. So if you missed it last time, that's okay. We still got time. We still got time. While we have enjoyed all services here this month, there will be no service in this physical location next Sunday. Instead of our traditional service or traditional worship service on Sunday, June 25th, we will have Sunday worship on Friday, June 23rd at 7 p.m. That's this Friday coming up. So no service at ECC on the 25th. Instead, we will support our pastor and his two preaching engagements on that day. For those that would like to attend the services in Queens, New York on the uh, on June 24th and June 25th and would like not to drive. I don't know about you all, but sometimes the traffic in New York is overwhelming. They drive crazy out there. I'm not trying to be driving, mess up my car, and get my insurance premium to go up. So if you don't want to drive, please sign up on the link posted on the realm no later than Tuesday. As we look down the line, Kingdom Campaign Service meets Sunday Night Revival with Bishop Anthony Gilliard. It's happening on July 2nd at 6.30 p.m. Pastor will be coming today with more information. Restoration Fire Revival is coming in August, y'all. August 9th through the 13th. We're asking everyone, who did I say? Everyone to get ready as this will be the biggest Restoration Revival. Restoration Fire Revival, I got to get that right. Ever. More information to come. ECC Daycare needs donations and supplies. Um, the team some donations and some supplies, some wipes, some snacks, tissue, etc. Anything that you can do to help, we would definitely appreciate it. Please see Sister Takala if you'd like to make donations. Please consider volunteering to be a part of ECC's cleaning committee, which I've already volunteered, y'all, just so you know, so we're just waiting for some more people to volunteer as well. Information will be made available for those to join on well realm. This is a large facility that requires weekly maintenance and care. Please join the team in keeping our church clean. For our birthdays and anniversaries. Let's start with anniversaries. Just so y'all know, in case you didn't know. This week was our pastors and our first ladies, Salisbury. 16 years. 16. That's one six year anniversary. Huh? That's a long time, Bassett. <laughs> but we're real proud of you guys. You are a role model. And you basically, I'm taking some inspiration for sure. <laughs> so congratulations on your 16th year anniversary. Happy birthday and anniversary to all those celebrating in the month of June. Special shout out and acknowledgement to our pastor and the first lady. Also, June 9th marked the seventh year anniversary for ECC's official formation. Wow. Happy anniversary, ECC. Reminder, we will be celebrating the second quarter birthday on Friday night after our Sunday on Friday service. So don't miss out on an opportunity to receive your birthday or anniversary gift from ECC. These are your announcements, ECC. Let's go ready to do things and let's get this myth on going, right, y'all? Are we proud of our men? As we are moving on to our special Father's Day presentation, I would like to take the time to read our mission statement. The 
mission and goal of ECC's men's department is to provide strategic men's opportunities, both in ministry and the marketplace, that will grow men in our association and share Christ's love in tangible ways in our community. To provide opportunities specifically for men to fulfill God's five purposes in their lives of worship, fellowship, discipleship, ministry, and end mission. And a world that is consistently creating an alternative to the idea and role of males, we will continue to exemplify and encourage every male we connect with to strive for godly principles, godly values, and above all else, godly fear. We are men created to encourage, to comfort, and to build. Once again, y'all, this is Men's Month. I know you ladies, y'all had y'all time last month, and we supported y'all, right? So I need the same energy this month for all of our men, right? <laughs> We're going to present our token of appreciation to our fathers today. Now, we appreciate all men in the building. We love you all. But the fathers, today's Father's Day, y'all, and I'm one of them, and I'm, I'm excited. You have no idea if any of y'all knew or um, ever heard of my story. For me to be here today, it's been a journey. It's been a journey, and God has been good to me. He has blessed me beyond imagination, and I just want to take the time today to show appreciation to all of our fathers in the building today. So while I call on my beautiful wife back there, Nick, to come up, come on, give her, give her a clap, come on, y'all, don't, 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 don't leave me hanging out here by myself, I said beautiful, y'all should have been clapping already, come on now. <laughs> So as she, as she brings me the uh, the give backs, I'll be reading off their names and presenting to our fathers today. Don't be nervous, baby. I, I do that enough for both of us. forward for us as we as we honor you for Father's Day. We love you. Deacon Mac, can you come up? We got a little something for you. just getting to know him each and every day and the commitment that he has to come here day in and day out and do the work and be a helper in the house of the Lord especially to Pastor Corey and anything that you need him to do he's always here and ready to, to serve so I just want to say brother that I appreciate you, we love you and we just hope that you continue doing the work and never dis get discouraged so I'd like to honor you today, and happy Father's Day. He, he's almost there. He's not quite there yet, but he's there. He's there. He's there. That's his wife over there. <laughs> appreciation as a father. Clap for him. Thank you, y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Father's Day, my brother, and continue the good work.
just have a little communication going on, y'all. Bear with me. We're coming. We're coming. All right. Awesome. What do we have next? Happy Father's Day. We just want to say we love you, man, and keep up the work. Now, last but not least, I said last but not least, we love all our fathers, right? But this father in here, he's our shepherd. He's our pastor. Pastor Corey Salisbury. If I can have you come up, sir. While we show you some appreciation, not only for being the leader of this house, but for being a great father to your family, we're inspired to be here. We just want to say we love you, and we wish you a happy Father's Day, sir. Come on, let's give our men's president, Brother Joe, a great hand of praise. Come on, very quickly. We want to move expeditiously. I want you to prepare your hearts. Amen. For giving. Amen. This is our offering time. Amen. And immediately after our offering, we're going to receive the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, amen. To give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, shall men give back unto you. We believe here at the Empowerment Christian Church. Better to give than it is to receive. That it's better to give than it is to receive because we believe that God has blessed us. Somebody say, God has blessed us to be not only receivers, but has blessed us to give. Amen. Amen. So I want you, my brothers and my sisters, to prepare your hearts for seed sowing. Amen. This is our tithe and our offering. Amen. I believe Deep Coleman will come. Amen. As we're training them, amen, and everyone, amen, how to partake in seed offering. He'll come and ask for our offering. Amen. Our seed offering after he finished preaching. Amen. But those of you that are sowing today, sowing tithe and offering, I need you to stand to your feet. Amen. As a matter of fact, everyone stand. Amen. That way, because we walk. Amen. We get our cardio in. We make sure, amen, that no one has to cross over you. Amen. But we sow. And then if you don't have seed to sow, we still believe in old school. Deacon Mac, just move down to your left a little bit. Thank you. Brother Jay, move down to your right. There we go. Thank you so much. Amen. We believe believe, therefore we shall receive. Amen. So in the Department of Christian Church, we place our offering in our right hand, signifying what? Well, that's it. Y'all awake today. Say it one more time. The right hand represents what? While we God fights for us with his left hand, he provides for us with his right hand. The scripture declares unto us that in the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy. And at his right hand are what? Pleasures forevermore. So whatever it takes to make you happy, he said, it's in my presence and it's in my right hand. So as we release the seed from our right hand, it gives God the opportunity to place manifestation back unto us. Somebody say, I receive it now. So I want you to lift your seed in the air and I need you to help us declare this. Today I present my tithe, my offerings, and my love gifts. This is my first and this is my best. As we give today's offerings, we believe that we receive now, if you need it, I need you to shout it. Jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, settlements and estates, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, lost money found, bills paid off, mortgages paid off, car loans paid off, student loans paid off, bills paid off, debts demolished, royalties received, all of my needs are met. We receive the grace to walk in overflow and fulfillment. We expect more out of heaven than ever before. I receive my harvest. Come on, pull it down like you know it's coming. I receive my harvest now. Somebody say now. Somebody say now. By faith in Jesus' name, you are now in the hands of the ushers.
God for passing control in his absence. I don't want to take too much time because I got to go get my crab legs after this. So I want you to turn your Bibles, amen, to the gospel of Matthew chapter number 14. Amen. This isn't a Father's Day message, but it's a message from the Lord. Amen. Amen. While you're turning your Bibles to Matthew, the 14th chapter, amen, I'm going to pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you that you allowed us to come together in your presence one more time. Now, Father God, have your way in me. Oh, God, let me not say nothing of myself, but let me say what the Holy Spirit unctions me to say. Oh, God, give me clarity of speech. Give me clarity of thought. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. We're, we're standing as we turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter number 14, starting at the 22nd verse. Amen. Pastor, there was so much going on with these past few weeks. Amen. I haven't lined time to really get this together, amen, but the Lord did it, amen, I will be reading out of the uh, contemporary English version, amen, starting at the 22nd verse, it reads as thus, at once, Jesus made his disciples get into a boat and start back across the lake, but he stayed until he had sent the crowds away, then he went up into a mountain where he could be alone and pray. Later in that evening, he was still there. 24 says, by this time, the boat was long away from the shore. It was going against the winds and it was being tossed around by the waves. A little while before morning, Jesus came walking on the water towards his disciples. When they saw him, they thought he was a ghost. They were terrified and started screaming. At once, Jesus said to them, don't worry. I am Jesus. Don't be afraid. Peter replied and said, Lord, if it really is you, tell me to come to you on the water. 29 says, come on, Jesus said. Peter then got out of the boat and started walking on the water towards him. But when Peter saw how strong the winds were, he was afraid and started sinking. He shouted, save me, Lord, save me. At once, Jesus reached out his hand. He helped Peter up and said, you surely don't have much faith. Why do you doubt? When Jesus and Peter got into the boat, the winds died down. Verse 33 says, the men in the boat worshiped Jesus and said, you really are the son of God. If I can just take a text for the next few moments, my topic would be the master in disaster. Just look at your neighbor and say the master in disaster. You may have your seats. My brothers and sisters, we're living in a world today where we are seeing disasters after disasters. We've seen the COVID-19 disaster. We've been seeing wildfires. We've been seeing floods. And we even had a presidential disaster. And even just about two weeks ago, we was in that smoke disaster that came through from Canada. And I heard the other day on the news that there was a disaster in Texas. There was a tornado that had hit Texas. These disasters, they have left us hurting emotionally, physically, and spiritually. They stressed us out and even made some of us want to throw in the towel. But the question I want to raise to you this afternoon is, what do you do while you're sinking in your disaster? Who can you call on? Who can you grab a hold to, to just pull you up? What do you do while you're sinking in the midst of your disaster? If we read verses 13 through 21 of this 14th chapter, we have Jesus 
who just got done performing a miracle with his disciples. He fed 5,000 men with just two fish and five loaves of bread. Not only did he feed them with just that little bit of fish and bread, but he had 12 baskets of leftovers. Tell somebody that's more than enough. <laughs> After that, he makes his disciples get into a boat to go across the other side of the Sea of Galilee. One translation says that he forced them back into the boat. And you know, overseer, the reason why Jesus had to force them back into the boat was because he had to show them that he was the one with all power and all authority. He had to show them that he was the Lord and that he was the master and that he was the ruler and that he was the creator of everything. In the scriptures, Jesus declared that I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the light. I'm the alpha, and I'm the omega. I am the true and living vine. I'm the resurrection, and I am the life. I am that I am. I am he who is, and he who was, and who is to come. I'm Yahshua. I am Elohim. I am El Shaddai. I am Jesus the Christ. He simply had to prove to them who he was. Jesus then dismisses the 5,000 and goes up into the mountain to pray alone. He doesn't take any of the, the disciples. He doesn't take none of the people that he just fed. He didn't take an armor bearer. He didn't take an adjutant, no bodyguards, just himself. I want you to just tell someone you got to learn how to go to God for yourself. You can't always depend on someone else to get you out of where you at. You can't always depend on someone else to pray you through because they never will. They say they will and, and they never will. We see that today. We all told a little white lie before. I mean, we see that today when people post on Facebook that they just had a death in the family. The first thing we do is say we're praying. We put praying hands. We're praying for the family. And what I come to realize is, no, you ain't. You ain't praying. You ain't praying. Because you don't even know how to go to God for yourself, let alone for someone else. Amen. When I was growing up overseer, they would say, that's a little white lie. <laughs> Amen. Tell your neighbors, say, say, say stop uh, telling little white lies. Stop telling little white lies. Amen. We're so dependent on others nowadays. And honestly, it's kind of sad. I know that sometimes we get a little weak and we get a little desperate and we need help from others. But I'm not going to pray for you to get a car when you could just do that for yourself. Now, I can touch and agree with you, but you can pray for God to give you that car for yourself. You want me to tarry with you for just simple things that you can do on your own. Tell somebody you got the authority to do it yourself. Amen. While the disciples, Deacon Joe, were at sea, a storm comes. The storm comes with strong winds and violent waves. The disciples, they were experienced fishermen. So this isn't the first storm that they ever experienced like this. So they were kind of common with this, this type of, you know, weather. But it was still something that you don't take for light. And as dawn approached over the surface and just a tad bit of light appears upon the surface, Jesus decides to leave his prayer station and go to the disciples on the water after his prayer time. Jesus, the man with all power, does something that no one has ever done before. And this was the first miracle that we see in this type of setting. He walks on the water towards the boat, which was way far from the sea. He gets close enough for the disciples to see a figure in the distance. They weren't even sure what was in the distance because the scripture declared that they said it was a ghost. And they started screaming because they were afraid. Now, I'm not going to lie. I might have been scared, too. I, first of all, I'm already in the midst of this storm, and I don't need nothing else to come and freak me out. But Jesus says to them, calm down. It is me.
do not be afraid. Now, how can you tell someone to calm down in the middle of a storm looking at a random figure that's not even recognizable? Okay. He tells them to calm down. And to be honest, I would have lost my mind. Because <laughs> now I don't even know who's speaking to me. Amen. I would have lost my mind. So Peter said, Lord, if it is you, order me to come to you on the water. Now, Peter is known for being a little stubborn. He's quick to speak before he thinks things through. And while that got him in trouble from time to time, it also led him to experience things no one else had experienced. He tells the Lord, if it is you, Lord, order me to come to you on the water. He puts the Lord to a challenge. And Jesus he, he replied in, a, in a, such a simple way. His simple reply was, come. He said, come. So what Peter does is climb over the side of the boat in the midst of the strong winds, in the midst of the violent waves, and starts walking on the water towards Jesus. And this is the second miracle that we see in this text. First of all, it takes faith to leave a sure foundation the boat, to get into an unsure foundation, the water. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. But as Peter is walking on the water, he notices the waves and the winds are just too strong. And he gets distracted by his circumstances and starts to sink in the water, Elder Pat. I want to tell somebody don't lose your focus in this season. Many things, many challenges, many issues, many dilemmas, they will come, but you can't allow yourself to get distracted by it. Proverbs 4 and 25 says, keep your eyes straight ahead. Ignore all sideline distractions. Most people that take pictures, you, have, you know that you got to focus your camera first before you take the picture. Because if you don't focus it, you'll come out with a blurry image. So we must pay attention to what God is doing in our lives because we cannot afford to live our lives in a blur. We can afford to have a blurry pathway. We used to say, oh, see, where the Lord leads me, I will follow. Well, how is he going to follow you if your pathways he's telling you to go is blurry? You can't, you can't, you can't. You, some of you say, oh, I'm just living life. I'm running around for others. Uh, you're leaving yourself behind. You're not caring and worrying about yourself. You're not putting yourself first. No, it's time out for that. It's time to focus on God as he focuses on us. Now, I got about 10 more minutes because I, hear, I smell my crab legs already. And as Peter is sinking, he shouts and he says, Lord, save me. As he's sinking down in the water. Jesus didn't wait until Peter is completely submerged under the water. But immediately he yells out, Lord, save me. So what Jesus did was reach out his hand and grabbed him from his sinking place. Many times we feel defeated by the storms in our life. We want to give up. We want to throw in the towel. We want to look for others to help us. We want to look for others to bring us out. Call on friends. Call on family members. But we forget to call on Jesus. I called on the Lord overseer, and he heard my cry. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in, and they are safe. While we're in the midst of our storms, we have to cry out, Lord, save me. Save me from drowning. Save me from my own self. Save me from this situation I can't handle anymore. I need you to come and see about me. And that's that exactly what the Lord did for Peter. When the Lord saved Peter from his sinking place, he puts him back in the boat and he rebukes Peter for having such little faith. The Lord didn't, he didn't do something that just concludes this whole chapter of the, of, of Matthew, he stops the winds and the storms. He puts Peter back in the boat and he stops the storms and the winds and the waves and the everything that was going on. 
what kind of man is this that even the winds obey? I just came to encourage you and let you know that the master is in the midst of your disaster. Even though you're in the storm, even though you've been tossed here and there, the Lord will come to your rescue and plant your feet on solid ground. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea, he heard my despairing cry, and from the waters he lifted me, now safe in mine. That's why I praise him. That's why I magnify him. That's why I bless him. That's why I worship him. Because the devil thought he was doing something, but God got a hold of it. I said, God got a hold of it. The devil thought he was going to take me out. He thought me had, he had me down for the count of three. But God lifted me up from that defeated place and planted me in victory. He can't count me out. Look at your neighbor and say, the devil can't count me out. The devil can't count me out because the Lord has come to pick me up from my storm when the wicked, even my enemies, and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh. They stumbled and fell. For it is he who has kept us and not we ourselves. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. That's why I can't give up. That's why I can't throw in the towel. While I'm in my storm, Pastor, while I'm in the midst of my disaster, I got to praise him. I got the right to praise him. I got a right to thank him. For I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. I just need somebody to praise him. I just need somebody to thank him. If you know that this is not the end, I need you to open up your mouth and give a Shabbat unto the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Just tell a neighbor, the master is in the midst of your disaster. He's in the midst. The flood, it won't, it won't drown me. The fire can't consume me because he's in the midst. Listen. Overseer, you know about this, but for the first time I went to Florida, it was raining cats and dogs. And then about 10 minutes later, it went back to normal. And I was kind of confused because I said, well, it was just raining crazy. Why is it back to normal now? And I've, I've asked my family member that I was with at the time. I said, well, I said, what in the world just happened? But, you know, why did it rain and then why did it stop? Like all of a sudden, in 10 minutes. She looked at me and she said, oh, that was just a sun shower. I just want somebody to know you're not even going through a storm. You're going through a sun shower. It may feel like a hurricane. It may feel like a tornado. But it's just a sun shower. This too will pass. This too will pass. This too will pass. Just look at a neighbor, say, neighbor, this is a sun shower. It won't be too long before I come out. It won't be too long before my hands are raised in victory. It won't always be like this. For the Lord will perfect the things that concern him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just need somebody to praise him. I just need somebody to thank him. Because we're only going through a sun shower. We're only going through a sun shower. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, 
y'all. Praise him. Come on, lift your voice like a trumpet in Zion. Hallelujah. And what you got to do is, I know sometimes you feel like giving up. Sometimes you, you know, you're a little weak. But what you got to do is, you got to dance in your storm. You got to praise him in your storm. Because like I said, it won't always be like this. The clouds will pass. And soon after the clouds will pass, Pastor, the sun will shine. Soon after the clouds will pass, the sun will shine again. I want to know if I got anybody that can praise him in the midst of your storm. I want to know if I got anybody that can praise him in the midst of your disaster. I want to know, is there anybody that can help me give God praise? Is there anybody that can help me? wanted me to tell you something. The Lord told me to tell you that he hasn't forgot about you. I know sometimes you seem like you're in the, the shadows and it seems like you're being looked over. It seems like, you know, you're saying to yourself, I'm right here. You know, I'm, I'm right in your face. But the Lord says he hasn't forgot about you. And he gave me this word weeks ago. So I'm so glad that you came here. And he also said he's dealing with something inside of you. I don't know when your next appointment is. But what the doctors thought they saw last time. God has said, I'm healing your body right now in the name of Jesus. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. And he also told me to tell you, don't worry. Don't worry about the space, don't worry about the house, don't worry about the money, because the Lord said, I got it all taken care of. Now, I know I've never seen you dance before, but he said if you can praise him in the midst of your storm, he will surely bring you out. So I need you to take about a couple of seconds to do something. I need you to do something. I need somebody to help him to praise him.
says if you have faith the size of a mustard seed that's just a little bit you don't even gotta have a lot but if you have faith he had on a mouse the size of a mustard seed to believe God to do it for you it will be done now pastor come on I want you to help me with this We're going to place this cloth on your head. Hey! I need somebody praying. Because after this, what the doctors thought they saw, in the name of Jesus, it won't be there. Hallelujah! Touch her, God. Oh, God, we bind the hand of the enemy. Oh, God, we come and we call that this tumor will be dissolved by the time she gets to the doctors. I need somebody praying. I need somebody to help us. Oh, God, this tumor will be gone. There will be no signs of this tumor, God. In the name of Jesus, as we touch her head, God, as we touch this tumor, God, we ask that you shrink it right now, God. In the name of Jesus, oh, God, and she will be made whole. She will be made whole. She will be made whole because she's coming out with the victory. I need somebody to go up in the praise because by this time next week, by this time next week, by this time next week, he said, I'm reversing the report. Whose report will you believe? somebody that believes in miracles. I need somebody that believes in miracles. Come on, y'all. Hey. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Stripping the body now. Stripping the body now. Stripping the bones now. Stripping the blood now. Stripping the now, God. Stripping the breathing now. In the name of Jesus. Do it now. Do it now. Hallelujah. Hey. 
believe. We shall believe the report of the Lord. We shall believe the report of the Lord. We shall believe the report of the You're walking in victory. You're walking in victory. Hallelujah.
Every father online that is watching, that is tuned in, amen, we touch and agree with you now that the Lord has given you the strategic ways, amen, to deal with your children, to deal with anybody who you father, in Jesus' name. Just look at another neighbor and say, the master in your disaster. I don't got to worry. I don't got to worry because he's the master in my disaster. Be not weary in well-doing. Be not weary in well-doing. You shall reap if you're faith not. Like I 
said earlier, my wife is taking me to get crab legs. I want to do this quick. Amen. But how many know that? How many know that the Lord is good? How many know that He's kind to us? Amen. And how many know that the number eight means new beginnings? See, sometimes storms are necessary. Because what a storm will do, Pastor, it'll come in and it'll destroy everything. But then, after the storm is over, everything that you got is brand new. So sometimes the storm is necessary in your life. So the number eight means new beginnings. And I need everybody that can and will to help me this afternoon to put a number eight on your giving. Whether it's 18, whether it's 28, 38, whatever it is, put an eight on the end of it because the Lord is getting ready to do a new thing in you. Hey, he's getting ready to give you a new job. He's getting ready to give you a new house. He's getting ready to give you a new car. But whatever it is, there's new beginnings coming to your life. New beginnings coming to your life. So I need those. Thank you, Pastor. Whatever it is, 18, 28, 38, 48, 58, 68, whatever it is, put an eight on it for our new beginnings. Whether you're doing it in cash, whether you're doing it on the card. But when you have it, please stand. Whenever you have it, please stand. Father, we ask that you bless the gift. We ask that you multiply it. We ask that you increase it. Right now, in the name of Jesus. No lack in this season. No lack in this season. No lack in this season, but we thank you for more than enough. In Jesus' name, amen. If you give it on your cash app, amen, just touch the basket and touch my hand. Bless you, Pastor Michael. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you, Sister Dean. Bless you, Pastor. stand behind me 
and I'm going to ask for Deacon Coleman to come at this time. Deacon Coleman, you have done your job and you've done it well. And one thing I, I, I said at the onset of your introduction is that you submitted yourself to this house and you submitted yourself to sonship. And, and what sonship looks like, it's, you know, I know in the old days when we were rebuked and when we were uh, chastised, it was often came from the pulpit to make us feel like an overseer would say, uh, make you want to crawl under the benches and, and never come back again. But one of the things I can say about Deacon Coleman is that he has taken every beating, if you will, and has taken it, can I say it this way? He's taken it like a G. He's taken every phone call. He's taken every text message. He's taken every open rebuke, which sets him up for elevation. You, you can't be elevated if you can't take chastisement. Chastisement comes to grow you. It comes to build you up in the most holy of faith. And as we begin to make transitions, even within the ministry, there are certain underlying things that have to take place first. Uh, there's no sense in one to go up and then everybody else is left behind. And so God is very strategic about what he is doing. And he's very, it's an oil. He's very strategic about what he's doing. He makes no mistakes. And I spoke with Overseer after being in prayer and I called her immediately while I was at work and I spoke with her and I said, the Lord told me that it's time to elevate Deacon Coleman. And without any question or without any talk back, if you will, she said he's worthy of it. She said he, he's, he's worthy of it. He shows up when no one else shows up. He does the job when no one else is willing to do the job. And he does it all quietly and, and is not looking for any glory, is not looking for any promotion or any any acknowledgement. But somebody say, but now is his time for elevation. So we're here to announce to him and to the entire world that after today, he's no longer known as Deacon Davon Coleman. But he is now known, will be known as Elder Designate. <laughs> Davon Coleman. I'm going to read this before opening it for me. I'm going to read this before I lay hands because, and I'm going to ask Kanaj, I know you're recording, just give somebody else the phone because I need you to stand with him just for a moment. Uh, the Empowerment Christian Church Official Headquarters, County of New Haven, State of Connecticut, in the United States of America, present this certificate of intent unto all men to whom these present, sh presents shall come. That by the grace of God and with an eye single to his glory, I, the Reverend Corey Robert Salisbury, Senior Pastor of the Empowerment Christian Church, with the full agreement and on behalf of the Board of Presbyters of the above named body, intend to ordain Devon, Tavon Coleman to the office of elder in the Lord's Holy Church on the 13th day of August in the 23rd year of the millennium 2000 in Hamden, Connecticut. Having been led of the Holy Spirit, we do find Davon Coleman to be of good behavior most of the time, an obedient servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's when chastisement comes into place. Uh, an obedient servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, faithful to the sacred scriptures of truth and fit for this most holy office. This apostolic order is given by my hand and seal in the sixth month of the year known to us as June on this 18th day of the year of our Lord, 2023 at the headquarters, both Overseer Ernestine Salisbury and Pastor Corey R. Salisbury. And so now I lay my hands on you as you come forward. Someone, because what the Lord showed me was even after I lay my hands, he told me to tell you it, it, it's amazing that you would preach that scripture and you and I have not been in conversation about this because the Lord told me to tell you to prepare yourself for the storm. He told me to tell you to prepare yourself for the storm. He said to keep your feet rooted and grounded in his word and in his will because this next storm isn't coming to shake you, it's coming to take you out. But as I lay my hands on you now, 
I decree and I declare that this water is just making you like a tree that's planted by the rivers that shall bring forth the fruit that God has already planted on the inside of you. I encourage you now to stay strong and hold on to the word. As I lay my hand on you, I lay my hand on Kenijah to help undergird you in this new season of your life. Kenijah, this is your season to undergird the man of God like never before. As you're bringing forth his first male child, the Lord told me to tell you that the road is going to get weary. You're going to grow tired. But that's only because you're being set up for a season called due. There's so much that God has afforded over your life that he has called the enemy to hold up over you meaning that it was a season in which you were not ready. But God told me to tell you that this is a season of preparation for you. He says, I'm preparing you. I'm preparing you. He said, I'm preparing you. I'm preparing you. I am preparing you. I am preparing you. Even in the midnight hour when you hear from God, God said, this is my divine talking season to you. Don't roll over. Don't tell God you'll come back to it in the morning. Because God said there's these special revelations and truths that I will minister unto you that will bring you to the nations. He said, as we set the precipice of what is getting ready to happen in your life, we undergird you now. We undergird you now. We undergird you now. You won't fail. You won't falter. You won't fall to the side. But you shall accomplish that which the Lord has set out for you to do. This is not only your season, but it is your time. And I encourage you now to hold on. To hold on to God. Because God said, I will not fail you. But every word that I have predestined over your life, it shall come to pass. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I gird you up now. I gird you up now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And I'm here to let you know that in this season, don't be surprised at the fall away. You just don't fall away. There are some that are not going to be able to go to this next level with you. And if you don't put them to the side, God said, I will. This season is it's called a season for a lonely walk. Because there are times that the Lord says, I have to speak to you and I have to have your ear. You can't hear from anybody else. You can't hear from anyone else's opinions. But you need to seek God for the answers. So I gird you up now. I gird you up now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. You won't fail. And you won't falter. But you shall do everything that the Lord has accomplished over your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I need everybody to clap your hands. As we present to you. Our elder elect, Davon Coleman. Come on, clap your hands and thank God for them. Come on, clap your hands and thank God for them. God said, I promise, made you a promise. And he's going to fulfill that very promise. Come on, clap your hands one more time and thank God for him. Thank you, Lady K. What, what a moment. Thank you, leaders. Come on, overseer. Thank you, leaders. Thank you. God made us a promise. And we thank God for what the Lord is doing. Tell somebody, say, you're next. Now, don't tell them if you don't want it to. <laughs> but God is very strategic and what he says and what he does. And I just want to be obedient to the spirit of the Lord. Can you clap your hands one more time? We've got to move. I know it's Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all of those that are watching online. Amen. I believe that we have somebody that's joining the church today. Amen. If you're here, come on. Come on, let's receive you to the body. Come on, y'all. Clap your hands. We're receiving to the body, Brother Jeremiah Godly. What a name, right? Come on, y'all. <laughs> Come on, clap your hands and let's receive him. We thank God. 
Amen. This is what, three weeks in a row? Three weeks in a row. God is continuing to add to the body, and we thank God. Brother Jeremiah, you're going to go with Minister Keisha, and she's just going to grab your information if you don't already have it. Amen. Come on, we are dismissing. Come on, everyone standing. Happy Father's Day to the old man, Elder Curtis, watching. Everybody point your hand to the camera and say, Happy Father's Day, Elder Curtis. Amen. I don't know anybody else that's watching, but we wish, amen, but all the fathers that are watching, we wish you happy Father's Day. Amen. Those fathers that are here that have not received a gift, amen, you can see our men's president, Brother Joe, will make sure you receive your Father's Day gift on our dismissal. Amen. Again, there's no service on Sunday, but there'll be service when? Amen. It's going to be Sunday on Friday at 7 o'clock. Amen. Our men will be preaching. Our men will be singing. They'll be doing the entire service. Amen. We're going to have a wonderful time this Friday at 7 o'clock. Amen. Amen. And then Saturday, we're heading to Queens, New York. Amen. To be with Pastor Too Good, Pastor Jonathan Too Good, and his birthday celebration. I believe the service starts at 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock, amen. If you're driving, we'll make sure you have the uh, directions. But for those of you that, amen, do not want to drive, we, we, we do have a sprinter, amen, that we have uh, uh, obtained uh, to go with us on Friday, on Saturday, and on Sunday. Amen? Amen. So if you have not signed up on Realm, please do it no later than Tuesday. And we are excited about what God is doing there. One more time, no service on Sunday, but it will be on Friday at 7. Amen? Amen. Come on, lift your hands in the presence of the Lord. Father, we thank you for what our eyes have seen and what our ears have heard. Thank you. Thank you to everyone. Thank you to everyone for your anniversary, love, and gifts that you showed to both my wife and I. We are so grateful. Amen. We, I, I told Coleman, I said that was too much. Amen. And I was trying to find ways to put it back into the house, but y'all knew what y'all was doing. And I thank God for you. Amen. We love you. I can't say that enough. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. Amen. Amen. Lift your hands in the presence of the Lord. Father, of what our eyes have seen and what our ears have heard, we are grateful. We decree and we declare from this point on and forever that we shall never be the same. Now, God, as we leave this place, but never your presence, we ask for you to go with us as we go with you. Love us. We will be loved. Keep us. We will be kept. Deliver us and we shall be delivered. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, both now and forever. And the people of God said amen, amen, and amen. You are dismissed in Jesus' name. Hug three people on the way out and just tell them, say, he's the master in your disaster. God bless you. Go in peace.